So to be quite honest, I didn't know how to approach this. I wanted to make a video essay in which I approach the subject in a very analytical light, not really poke fun at it, or not really make a lot of jokes because, you know, it's a very touchy subject, it's a very serious subject. I wanted to kind of, you know, make a few jokes here and there, but not at the expense of the creators of the art or the art itself, and I'm going to be referring to it as art, and you'll see why. Here's my take on the whole controversy around Trauma Core. Traumacore is an aesthetic that delves into the themes of abuse and trauma, particularly sexual trauma or sexual trauma towards children. It often draws heavily on childlike angelic themes. Many people turn to this aesthetic in order to help them cope with the pain that they've suffered in the past. Traumacore often intersects with weirdcore, an aesthetic focused on motifs considered jarring or bizarre. It is frowned upon to participate in the Traumacore aesthetic if you are not a survivor of trauma yourself, as it is considered fetishizing of a very serious issue that consumes many people's lives. This is the description that we were given from the Aesthetics Wiki. It might not be the most reliable source, however it does give us an insight that was hopefully peer-reviewed by people who are actually a part of the trauma core community into actually uh, understanding what it is. Child trauma, whether it be sexual in nature or physical or emotional, is a very serious issue and it's very much a real issue. Let's look at what makes trauma core, image by image, the composition of these images. One thing that you'll see often in these images that might remind you of liminal spaces are the backgrounds, uh, places from your childhood. Oh, okay, well, I get it now. I hope it clicked in some people's minds why liminal spaces came up in a video about childhood trauma. For the average person, looking at liminal spaces can be a way to transport yourself back into a simpler time. It might be something like playing video games until 10 p.m. and you had to bike home, or you're at your uncle's house wandering about when there's a birthday party just outside, or maybe it was an empty home that you were leaving because you had to move states. These are all real memories of childhood, and it's something that a lot of people can relate to. However, not everyone who had a happy childhood is going to come across these pictures. People who have gone through trauma might be transported not into happy happy memories, but memories of that trauma. Instead of seeing something familiar like the house of their friend, they might see the house of their abuser. The walls and outlines might become too familiar and it just brings them back to a traumatic memory that honestly just should have been forgotten. A lot of the times, even if they have trauma, a lot of it's undiagnosed. And other times it's completely triggered by these images like liminal spaces. But there's more to these pictures than just the backgrounds. Aesthetics are more than just background pictures. There's a lot more composition here. Something important to note would be the big blobs and uh, kind of humanoid figures, sometimes they're just, you know, circles or shapes, but they're these kind of fuzzy, out-of-focus blobs that are in placeholders of where people should be, such as on a bed or by a doorway or by a desk. My interpretation of these is that these are basically stand-ins for the artist, where they were and where they felt and how they felt at that time. Very dark, very dazed, very confused. Definitely took a lot of thinking for me to for me to realize that. <laughs> One subgenre of this aesthetic is derealization core. Now, I wanted to talk about this aesthetic in particular because I don't subscribe to it, I don't think that it's an actual aesthetic, or I don't think it should be considered that. I think that that's very dangerous territory that Trauma Core treads on, but this is very just kind of jumping right into the into the pool. Derealization core is an aesthetic derived from derealization. It's a mental disorder brought upon developmental trauma, eating disorders, personality disorders, pretty much a plethora of mental illnesses and traumas. The main symptoms of derealization are described as one's disconnect from their surroundings or themselves. I don't have the disorder myself, but the neurocritic uh, does. He dealt with drugs and prostitution at the age of 15. I'm glad that he got out of that situation. So he wrote a blog post about it on June 1st of 2014. Derealization is often but not always associated with depersonalization, a feeling of detachment from oneself, as if you yourself are unreal or even outside of your body. Both of these phenomena can be mild and transient, or the symptoms can be chronic and disturbing in depersonalization disorder, which is considered a dissociative disorder. I highly encourage you to read the rest of the blog post, it actually does delve deeper into a lot of uh, interesting things such as the phenomenology of derealization and Klein-Levin syndrome. If that piques your interest at all, please go check it out. All of my sources are in the description. What can we interpret from this man's first-hand accounts of depersonalization and the connection between these two aesthetics? Like I said before, the blob-shaped humanoid uh, shadows are representative of the derealization that the artist felt. Other times when there isn't a blob, there's an anime girl 
or Hello Kitty or something like that. It's a basically a character that basically takes the place of the artist in that situation. It's a pure, innocent character, innocent like a child, surrounded by words of hate and resentment. I think it's a reflection of their lost innocence. Okay, but now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the texts. It's not abuse unless you hit me. Why can't I remember what happened? Why can't I understand what's happening now? You promised me you'd stay. You lied. I only exist to be consumed by others. I only live to be you. Stop taking pictures of me. Please. Stop. When will the thoughts ever leave my mind? I'm so sick. These are cries for help. And uh, that's why I try not to approach this in a very jokey manner, like I did my other two videos. I wanted to understand these posts. And I feel like I... I do now. It's an expression of their most inner, hateful, and resentful thoughts and feelings towards themselves. Trauma isn't just sexual abuse, of course. And I think that this is an expression of trauma through art, and I do consider these pictures an art form. Just now, different from something like art therapy, there's a community online, and you're just not alone. You're anonymous, but you're not alone. So what makes trauma core different from the different aesthetics? Weird core usually uses strange images, or as the weird core subreddit describes it, an image that gives off a strange vibe. It's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. They use imagery like disembodied eyes, mouths, and even blocks of texts and shapes that seem similar to trauma core. However, the themes of childhood abuse don't seem to be prevalent here. But the themes of disassociating, not feeling comfortable in one's own mind, and mental illness is. And I'm not saying that every aesthetic needs some kind of connection to a mental illness in order to be valid. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, a lot of the weird core posts actually have more in common with nostalgia or horror. Some people depict running away from cryptids, the phrase, do you remember, or a forceful plea to leave the image itself, or leave reality and enter the image, who knows, is there. Used core has a closer relationship to that cute pastel pink imagery and the characters that symbolize the innocence of childhood, as I brought up earlier. It's a showcase of the contrast between the abuse that they'd gone through and the trauma that they deal with daily, and the cute imagery that they represent their childhood with, hence the name used core. They feel used, they feel abused, and they feel disposable. Empty core is pretty much liminal spaces and weird core mixed together, so I won't dwell on that one too much. And sad core is just the same as trauma core, but a lot more subdued to include a multitude of mental illnesses. So while these are all depictions of mental illness, what made trauma core stick out to me? the most out of all of these. Well, I think it's mainly the controversy about the aesthetic that people have been very vocal about. The Sanrio community, wait, hold on, I, I, let me explain a bit. <laughs> Sanrio is a Japanese company that makes a lot of cute art, usually towards but not limited to kids, such as Hello Kitty. Like I said before, they use these characters in these posts. YouTuber Nylesia Maisa gave her two cents on the subject. If we can understand why it is inappropriate to draw sexual images of children's shows and have them readily available where children can see them at any given notice, such as with the My Little Pony Brony pandemic, why can't we understand the same with Trauma Core? Why should we be accepting of having trauma be an aesthetic? It's one thing to create vent art. It's another thing to take pictures of Hello Kitty or Cinema Roll and have them crying with edgy captions or triggering captions and triggering background images and place them in the tag that they do not belong. As an outsider, I really wouldn't feel her points on a personal level, although I think it is important to listen to what she has to say from her point of view. A lot of the points she made were mainly about the romanticization of mental illness, and I'll be discussing that shortly, but the main argument that she had against Trauma Core is that the Trauma Core community would abuse tags on Tumblr or Twitter and basically just use a lot of different kinds of tags that included the Sanrio community when um, in reality it should only be targeted towards people with, tra uh, people with trauma who are interested in Trauma Core. And I get that. Because because uh, you really don't want to show these kinds of images and very serious uh, subjects and, and topics to a younger audience who might be interested in the Sanrio community. I also see concern from both the Sanrio community and the Trauma Core community and them somehow being connected to DDLG or Daddy Dom Little Girl. It's basically a fetish that consists of a male partner who's very aggressive and a female partner who's supposed to be a young girl. Um, it's very, very weird. <laughs> but hey, I don't judge but you, sh you really shouldn't mix those, t those two things with this. <laughs> the reason why is because, you know, this is actual abuse and 
that's not it's just a fetishization of that which is why i understand why they should be very separate things because one is an expression of actual abuse and the other one is just fetishizing that abuse no thank you and so it makes sense as to why they want to change the tags so it's not accessible to children correct so the question arises is it that bad even though it's beneficial to people creating the posts yet possibly harming the community or even worse children is it really that bad? Art therapy is used with children, adolescents, adults, older adults, groups, families, veterans, and people with chronic health issues to assess and treat the following. Anxiety, depression, and other mental and emotional problems, trauma and loss, physical, cognitive, and neurological problems, and psychosocial difficulties related to medical illnesses. Art therapy can be very beneficial to people. Other times, it might not help, but a lot of the times people with trauma are just left undiagnosed. The only criteria for enjoying trauma core uh, would be that you have to have experienced trauma yourself, uh, according to the Aesthetics Wiki. However, it's impossible to see if the people in this community are actually getting the help that they need as well. A bigger issue arises when you start questioning as to this aesthetic actually helps their mentalities. While this may be used as a medium to get rid of those thoughts and those you know, kind of memories of the trauma, does it actually help them? Does it actually give them that professional help that they need? What's fascinating as well is the overwhelming amount of people that romanticize the aesthetic and fetishize the mental illnesses. A lot of the time it's seen as different or edgy, you know, trying to stick out and trying to feel different from everyone. So uh, a lot of teenagers are drawn to that who don't necessarily have, who never actually suffered from trauma, but just want to be seen as this very dark and mysterious uh, person. And it's very fucked up to be uh, quite honest. Even worse could be sexualizing this like the DDLG community has. But the Trauma Core community has taken great measures to make sure that they stay in very separate communities online. So the question still stands. Is Trauma Core bad? I would say no. I think it's an interesting way for artists to vent their thoughts and feel like they're a part of a community instead of just being alone with their thoughts of trauma and memories of such things. However, I do recommend that they change their tags so they're not associated with other different kinds of communities and it's just kind of its own bubble uh, for people who you know have trauma rather than kind of expressing it towards people who don't um, and people of younger ages or people who might sexualize that trauma. At the end of the day, I think it's great for for you to express your mental illness through art. I'm not a part of the community, but I do appreciate it. And I know the ups and downs, the pros and cons, and frankly, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know if there should be a call to action or not. I just wanted to come in with some answers as to what the community surrounding Trauma Core was. And quite frankly, I left with a lot more questions. What will they do about the DDLG community? Is the Sanrio community going to somehow be stepping into this? And most importantly, is this actually helping their mental health? I really hope the answer is simple, but I hope that this becomes becomes more than just an aesthetic, and I hope it actually becomes a way for people to deal with their trauma and their traumatic experiences in a very healthy way, while also seeking the help they need. Yeah, so this video was very serious, it was very long, I'm sorry. I also sound groggy because I just woke up. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Mental health is important, I have a, a few hotlines down below if you need someone to talk to. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed uh, this very serious video.